Today I have two neat tops that will take you about an hour to sew. It's a little special detail on the shoulder you can add if you want. And five or six pattern pieces, you can sew it all on the serger. Super cute, super wearable. Look at this lace detail. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And I have some sewing that you can do with knit fabrics today. And the style could be simple or could be interesting if you add an optional detail that this pattern has. What I'm talking about is the new Sabu top from Itch to Stitch. Now I was excited to test this pattern and sew it because this one is a lot more simple than other Itch to Stitch patterns I sew. Usually the patterns have a bit more complexity to them. There's a lot of woven patterns. So having a style like this is really great if you've just started sewing or if you're experienced, just if you wanna sew something simple and have instant gratification. And at the same time, it's a really cute pattern. It's not a basic basic. So ticks all the boxes for me as usual. This is a bat wing style top and you can see the version that Kenneth made. She is the owner of each to stitch where she made it in a solid. You can really see the shape of the shoulders and how the sleeve goes wide at the shoulders and then starts curving around the elbow, comes in and is fitted at the hips. A bat wing style, I'd never sewn one of these before. I'd always just sewn the styles that are more short and have the curve closer to the arm, dolman style. So new style for me, I was excited to try because I know Kenneth will always have really great drafting and the feet is gonna be amazing. That is the main feature, the body front and back, a bat wing style, round neckline, and you can add either a neck band or if you want it for more colder weather, you can add a cow neck, which is really pretty. It's not that big, it's just the right size. And on the bottom of these sleeves that reach below the elbow, so if you add on a shorter cuff, it'll end up being three quarters. And if you add on a longer cuff, it'll end up being full length. The cuffs are those that have shape like this, like an hourglass shape, so that it has the right circumference at the forearm and then narrower at the wrist. I always love cuffs like that <laughs> at the bottom. There's no hem to be done, you just sew on a hem band. You can sew it up like that and it would be the simpler style in this pattern. Or you can add a shoulder piece here. It's a piece that goes between the front and the back so you won't have a seam there but you have a shorter seam right there. Super interesting, I want to sew one of both. So that is in a nutshell the Subiu top. It's made for neat fabrics, stretchy fabrics. You need at least 50% stretch horizontally and vertically. Now this is super important with styles that have dolman sleeves or a bat wing style like this. And it's because the sleeve is incorporated into the front. When you extend your arms, you need that vertical stretch here also. So check your fabric. If it doesn't stretch vertically, I don't think it's gonna be that comfortable or very appropriate. You might end up feeling super constricted here around this area. And because the bat wing style has that shape, I think a drapey softer fabric would look best. I wouldn't wanna use something too structured, too stiff. Some cotton lycra can be pretty stiff, some Ponte Roma. Something too heavy, I would just stay away from that and try to find a really soft sweater knit, a really soft draping athletic knit, thermal knit, maybe double brush poly, a rayon French terry would be perfect. I've made two, I've made one for weather that's more spring, autumn, and the other one is for colder weather, so I've used a light athletic knit and I've used a sweater knit and combined it with stretch lace here for the shoulder detail. I was super excited to put that together and happy I found the contrast material for the shoulders. If you do wanna use that contrast piece, you can use same fabric type you're using for the top in another color maybe, something that matches. You can use stretch lace, stretch mesh, embroidered stretch mesh. I mean, you can have a lot of fun with that. It, it does need to stretch though, this piece, because it is part of the sleeve right there. Because this view top is a brand new pattern, it is 20% off discounted for the first week. If you like the style and it's something that you'd like to make for yourself, I'd really appreciate it if you use my affiliate link down below. When you purchase your pattern using my link, you don't pay any extra, but I receive a small commission back and it's one way that you can support the work I do here on YouTube. You have zero, zero to 40 US sizing that will go up to a hip of 62 inches. When you choose the sizes you want to make, just trust the chart and trust the drafting, especially for the bust. Just look at your body measurements, look at the chart. In the finished garment measurements, you only have the hip there. That's because there's no defined finished bust. It's because if you stretch your arms with the bat wing, you know, this is wide like this. So the bust is sort of in the sleeves also. 
So don't think there's a ton of extra space in there either and size down. I would just just choose the size and, and trust the drafting and you will be fine. Because there is a hemband at the bottom that will bring it closer to the hips and you have about one inch of negative ease, which is perfect. You have stretchy material and bands need to be a little bit smaller than the circumference that you're sewing them into or else they look really sloppy. So I've chosen a size 16. There are shorter and lengthen lines if you need them. This will reach the high or mid hip depending on your height. I had initially added an inch of length thinking I needed it, but then when I sold my first version, I thought, no, it's too long. <laughs> so I took that inch away and I put my hemband back on. And it, it is personal preference also, you know, some of you might like a shorter top, some of you might like a longer top, but you can shorten and lengthen it if you really want to. Do it where you're supposed to, so it keeps the bottom of the front and back pieces like the original, so it will fit your hemband properly. We always have sewing on this channel, of course, if that is something that you like to do. And if it's something that you like to watch in video and discover new ways of doing things, if you're newer to sewing, even if you're experienced, you always get some practical sewing in my videos. So if you think that's really cool, go ahead and subscribe to this channel, tap on the bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. I do upload quite a few, about 10 to 12 a month, so there's always a nice variety of content for you here. And we're very close to 30,000 subscribers, which is really exciting. So if you've been watching and you haven't yet subscribed, why not just tap on there, it's not hard. And I really, really appreciate it. So about the sewing, I've divided it into two sections this time. I've made two tops. I've sewn a simple version, the one that has only five pattern pieces. There's a front and a back, they're both cut on the fold, a neck band, a shorter cuff and a hem band. Five pieces, you can see it's sewn in two minutes. <laughs> So let's go ahead and see how this one quickly comes together and I'll be right back to show you. I've placed the back and front pieces right sides together. They are both cut on the fold, so it's just two pieces. And just two easy seams are coming, the shoulders and the side seams. The shoulders are simple and straight. I'm doing it directly on the serger. The seam allowance is 3 8 So as I sew, the blade is trimming about 1 8 of an inch off. The sides have a wide curve. It's a back wing style, so there's no sleeve to set in. Super easy, do that on both sides. Now for the hem band, there are two pieces. They will have seams to match each of the side seams of the top. And I prefer sewing these pieces on the sewing machine and pressing them open because it's less bulky. Then you open these seams, fold them onto themselves wrong sides together, putting pins to mark the center front and the center back. This band will be sewn onto the bottom edge of the top. You also need to mark your center front and center back the bottom of the top. I just do this easily with pins and I slide the top inside of the band, right sides together, matching these pins, all the reference points. The hem band is one to one with the circumference of the tops. You do not need to stretch the band to sew it onto the bottom of the top. It's one to one, very easy. And then it just goes searched on the round, done. This is the neckband option and all I do is take the short ends, right sides together. I also like to sew this with the sewing machine and I am also marking with pins all the reference points to put the neckband onto the top, center front, center back. There are notches on both of these pattern pieces so that you can match them all up. The band of course is shorter than the neckline and I'm sewing on the serger, always keeping these raw edges together. There are three layers. I'm carefully stretching each section of the neckband to match the neckline below. Just to keep this a little flat and neat, I'm doing some top stitching and I'm using a blind hem presser foot with a needle to the left and it gives me a really nice neat result. For the cuffs, you'll see those in the next version. Here is my summer type of subu top, not summer but more springish 
very light material, very soft, very drapey, it feels amazing on the skin. And you can see the style like this, batwing style, super easy to sew. On the end of the sleeve, I have the short cuff right there. I didn't include the sewing of the cuff in this segment because I'm including it in the next one. It's the same thing, it's just that this is a shorter cuff and the other one's longer. But the sewing aspects and the things you need to be wary of are all included in the next segment. This has the neckband. This neckline is perfect, it's not high, it's not low, it's, it's like this one, it, it's just really nice, it's fine. And I have top stitched this neckband down, sometimes I don't. And then at the bottom there's a hemband, you can see it's been serged there. I did everything with the serger in this one. I mean, the only little seams I did with the sewing machine was sew seams of the hemband, the neckband, and the cuffs, but that was all. All the rest was done with the serger, very quickly, very enjoyable. Let's see this one on. I've paired it with my red Quebec skirt. This is my Sabu top from Itch to Stitch in a size 16. I have three quarter length sleeves in this case, and the top hits the mid hip. The band makes the hemming so much easier, and it looks super neat. The shorter cuff added to the end of the sleeves make it a three quarter length. And the bat wing is not too exaggerated. To make this one appropriate for hot weather, I used a light knit and the neckband option. I'm super happy with this black and white print because it will go well with my red Quebec skirt and other colors and it'll be great for autumn and spring. A real treat to sew, super relaxing, no fuss, nothing complex here. In the next sewing segment, which is only about four minutes long, you'll see my winter version has the cow neckline, the longer cuffs, and most importantly, how to put this detail on the shoulder together. I was so excited to find stretch lace to match my sweater knit, so let's see. other pieces you need to sew the Sabu top with extra details this is the back it's got a higher neckline and the front has a lower neckline they're both cut on the fold and you can see there's a large section of the shoulders that's missing <laughs> that's the lace inset that will go there and the hem band is right there two pieces for the cow neckline it is a large piece cut on the fold only one and the cuffs are just longer and they're shaped those will go sewn to the bottom of the sleeves up closer you can see a double notch on the back piece that will match the one on the shoulder inset and the same thing you'll see on the front there is a single notch that will match the single notch on the inset piece this will help you put together your pieces super easily all we have to do now is put the front and back pieces right sides together matching the short ends of the sleeves this is what needs to be surged and then the inset will go in this space the rounded edge of the inset goes where the seam is and then this other type of shape will be part of the neckline later i'm just surging this little section 3 8 seam allowance and then i'm going to take my time and match the notches the one on the rounded bottom of the shoulder inset matches the seam we just surged. I've pinned it, matched all the notches, and now this will get sewn together. I've also pinned the other side as well. I'm taking this really slow because it is a curved area. There's no rush. Also, my pins keep getting stuck in the lace, so it's a little hard to remove. It looks so nice, I'm so excited to see this finished and you can repeat this on the other side as well. The cow piece is just one, it's pretty large, it's cut on the fold and where you see the raw edges there is a curved shape there. This will be the center back and this is what we need to sew now at 3 8 seam allowance. I do this on the sewing machine, the seam just goes together, wrong sides together and then you have your cow piece. There is a series of notches on the edge of the cow piece that will match the neckline. 
I like to mark center backs and center fronts. I'm doing it all with pins. The neckline of the top also have references that will match the cowl. Slide your neckline inside your cowl, match all the reference marks. The center back seam of the cowl piece will match the center back of the neckline. It's all pinned. We sew this on the round. This is one to one. You don't need to stretch the cowl piece to match the neckline. Being careful to keep the seam allowance of the shoulder inserts extended towards the sweater knee. These are the long shaped cuffs. When you sew this, you end up with a long sleeve. The notch that you see on these edges is not centered and that's because the front part of the sleeve is narrower than the back part of the sleeve and the cuff is going to match that. So I'm going to mark the shorter side with chalk on both pieces so that I know that this is gonna be the area that is gonna match the front part of my sleeve so I can match them correctly. You just fold these, the long ends, right sides together, sew them, 3A seam allowance, do the same as with the other pieces, fold that seam onto itself. I'll mark the notches of the cuff with pins. Here you can see that one side is shorter, this corresponds to the front part. Now on my actual top, I marked with chalk also my front piece so that I know how to put these together. I put the sleeve inside the cuff, make sure that the correct cuff is going to match the one that you're trying to place. You will need to stretch the cuff slightly, slightly to match, but not much. The other cuff piece that you have there, you need to turn it the other way around so it matches the other sleeve. They need to be mirrored. Just make sure you have everything matching and you'll be all good to go with these cuffs. This is my second version, so soft. This sweater knit is just buttery soft. It's so amazing on the skin. You can see this one has a short little seam right there on the sleeve, you saw how that came together. And then that gap that was missing is filled in with this piece. So there's no seam on there. And this is stretch lace. I found this little piece in a remnant bin years ago. I'd been keeping it for something special and it was just enough for this. And I'm so happy it was the same tone of blue. I think they go really well together and it just gives it something, something extra, a little bit of skin showing here. I love that. And here we have the cow neckline. It's not a rectangle either. There is some shape here and it's not very big. It doesn't take up too much fabric or give you too much bulk around there. So I think it was a really nice cow neckline to sew. And the long cuffs, you saw that the mark on the top of the cuff wasn't right in the middle. You just need to be careful to match the shorter bit of that cuff with the shorter bit of the front of the sleeve. So just be careful you get that right so you get your cuff eased in uniform. This is how the top looks inside out. You can see the surged edges keep everything really neat. You can see that the top of this shoulder piece is actually part of the neckline so it's caught in the cow neck and you have the center back seam of the cow at the center back right there. Let's see this one also paired with my red Quebec skirt because it just goes with everything. <laughs> this is my Sabu top from Itch to Stitch by 16. In a sweater knit, I chose the cow option this time. Hem finishes with a band. It's semi-fitted at the hips and it reaches the mid-hip for me. I didn't make any pattern adjustments. The cow neckline option is nice and loose. It's not too close to the neck, so it feels comfortable. And when you extend your arms, you can see the shoulder inset piece. I chose to use a stretch lace in this case. This is an optional feature and this piece goes up to the neckline. Here's a closer look at the neck and the shoulders. I think it's such a pretty detail that you can have a lot of fun with. I'm really happy with this butt wing style. I feel it fits amazing, it's super comfortable, it's so easy to sew in under an hour and it was super satisfying. I made these two in an afternoon, so nice, so enjoyable. Even though I was filming, it didn't take that much time at all. And I'm really, really happy I tried this bat wing style. I, I think considering styles of bat wings, I think this one's pretty discreet. I've seen other ones that are more dramatic, but I really liked it. I think it's a really nice style. 
and can be spiced up with a, with a little detail there if you want. If you get the newsletter, you always find the link there where Kenneth makes a blog post with all the photos from the testers. You can see all the versions, all the fabrics. I think the style looks amazing on everyone. And yeah, I love it. It was really fun. I'm glad I tried a batwing style that I hadn't tried before. Trying something new is always good. I'm very glad I did. If I was gonna try something new, trying it with this stitch, just was the right thing to do. Remember that the Subiu top is 20% off during the release week. If you would like to get this pattern for yourself, it's always nice to get it for a bit less and I'll leave you my affiliate link down below. I'm gonna go now and start on a project that's woven. I'm all ready for it. I'll see you again very soon with more sewing on this channel. Bye and happy sewing.